welcome back friends so we're back with uh, a package from PCB way and so this is a project that we're doing uh, I'll put a link to the first part of it this is our uh, I think it's our our third in our series of uh, looking at transistors and amplifiers and this is a class AB amplifier and uh, it's sponsored by PCB way uh, this is an unusually big uh, box from them and okay so they got, uh, got a bunch of goodies for us in here they got the pen that we normally get these are a different sticker than the little squares or little rectangular stickers that we normally get and we have this really big sticker hmm. Now I do these ones up a little bit different. These ones are in blue, cause why not? And uh, that's that's the layout. Now I made them uh, I made them the same size as the other ones. The only difference here is you know it's a different amplifier, meant in blue. So we've got our output here, our input there, our voltage up there, kind of the same kind of arrangement. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up uh, at least two of these, possibly even three. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with the three of them. Like what I'll just make up as shown in, in the schematic in that first uh, episode. And another one I'm going to make up uh, uh, using diodes so uh, that you can see what will go wrong if the diodes aren't perfectly matched to the transistors. And that's why we're using transistors as the diodes in order to keep them perfectly matched. Yeah, I, I may or may not be able to show you the effect. It depends on the diodes and the transistors and how well they're matched. And another one I may end up doing, i just jumper over the um, capacitor here because I want to I want to connect one up in series with one of our previous amplifiers to see what kind of um, overall gain we can get and you know have a full amplifier system here, a very small one. I mean, you could even put a third one in there and kind of adjust the gain on them. If you looked at my previous videos, you know that we can change the gain. We can either have a gain of about three, a gain of 18, or a gain of over 100. But you, you want your overall gain to amplify, but not drive any one of the stages beyond its capability. And we're looking here for about like a 5 volt peak to peak output on this stage maximum, um, regardless of what we have going into this. So if we need to be able to amplify, you know, 100 times, or 200 times or 300 times depending on the signal that we're putting into it but anyway so let me let's get started on building these okay got all my parts laid out all my tools so let's uh cue up the music and uh we'll see you at the end Okay, there we go. We got both of them built up. This one here is using two diodes for the bias. And this one here, which I, if you, I don't know if you saw it in the montage there, but I had a little trouble. I, I installed one of these transistors over in this spot. I had to take it out. But uh, yeah, we all make mistakes. Uh, and I'm no exception, that's for sure. So, okay. And this one has the transistors acting as diodes. 
um, to provide a more stable, thermally stable circuit. I've got to change this connector around because it's, it's the wrong way. All right, that's better. I mean, two mistakes, same day. Man. Okay, so here we have, uh, we have the one with the transistors as diodes all hooked up and ready to go here. I've got a little speaker on the output of it. Yeah, I've got the power hooked up and I have uh, my oscillator coming in here. And we can put a scope on the output of it to have a look at the uh, waveform. So at this point here, the scope is I'm looking for like a five volt peak to peak output. And uh, but first what we've got to do, we've got to turn on the power before we turn on the, the oscillator. And we've got to adjust um, the voltage at this point here to be 5.7 volts. And we just got to get a hold of our ground point here. And there's the test point for up there. We're at six. So we need to come down a little bit. Okay, I think that's good enough. All right. Yeah, let's get the oscilloscope up. Okay, let's check out the, the no load gain first, which is the, the, the design gain. Um, and let me get that oscillator going here. Okay, so there we can see the signal now is on the scope. And let's bring the output down to 5 volts peak to peak. That's yeah, good. So we have uh, 5 volts coming out and 530 millivolts going in. So that's a gain of 9.4, which is a uh, Almost exactly, I think, what we were looking for. Well, we're looking for something around 10, and uh, we got 9.4. I've got 9.998 volts going into it, and it's drawing only 8 milliamps. So let's put on the speaker onto it now. Okay, I hope that's not too loud. All right, that, uh, that brings up the current draw to 37 milliamps so we're up to 38 37 38 milliamps so we're putting about 30 milliamps into the speaker and uh, you can see uh, you can see the sine wave there that's that's a nice signal we've got very 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 low distortion here now before we go on with this before we go on with this I want to show you what this this other one here is like the one using the diodes I expect this to have a much much higher current draw I also expect that over time, depending on how mismatched the diodes are, I expect perhaps that that current draw will, will increase. And if, it's, if these diodes are bad enough, it'll increase to the point where the transistors will run away thermally. They'll just get too hot to operate properly. They'll, the voltage drop across their bases will change dramatically and they'll just keep conducting more and more and more and more. So let's, uh, let's hook that one up and see how it performs. Okay, turning it on here with no signal going into it, it looks like we're already up around 19, 20, it keeps going up. That's what I expected. It might stabilize, you know, it, it may actually stabilize, but let's adjust that uh, bias at this point here to be 5.7 volts. Let's see what it is right now. Oops, my meter timed out. So we have 5.3 looking at the uh, power supply up there, we've already gone up to 24 milliamps. Let's uh, increase this to, where it should be at 5.7. There you go. I can see the current has dropped down to 19 milliamps, but still it's, it's more than twice as high as what the other one was. Now, the reason that we, we do this bias is so that right here at the middle at the output, uh, we should be right around about five volts. So that it gives us our best chance at, at a full voltage swing before distorting. Now, now, let's do the same as we did with the other one. First, we'll, we'll put on the 
output of the function generator and I'll see what we're getting out of the... So we're getting exactly the same output, 5.033 volts for an input of 530 millivolts. So we've got the same gain of 9.4. Now the current's going back up again, we're back up to 23 milliamps. So it's much, much higher than uh, we had with the other one. So now let's put, let's put the speaker on it. Yes, that pops up to 45 milliamps, 46 milliamps, 47 milliamps. So you see, this is not as stable as what the other one was. And indeed, you know, in especially in an enclosure or something like that, and if the those diodes were a little bit less um, well matched, this could get out of hand. So now we're up to 49 milliamps. So it's, it's going up bit by bit, 50 milliamps. So I don't know what point this thing is really just going to start to take off. I don't know if I want to wait for it, but it that's that should be you know that's ample evidence there that using this kind of biasing really requires that you match those diodes perfectly to the transistors. And the one way to avoid having to go through all that is just just use the transistors themselves as um, as the diodes, and that way they have exactly the same thermal characteristics. Yes, yeah, so now we're up to 52 milliamps. So I'm going to stop this part of the experiment. I might uh, I might do a more extended one, but I you know I left this amplifier. I can take those diodes out and put transistors in, so I can have a useful little amplifier. We're 53 milliamps now. So yeah, I'm calling quits to this, and we'll go back to the other one, do some more interesting things with the other one. I'm going to have a look at the fast Fourier transform of it. Get a, just get a feel for for what the distortion is like yeah that, that's that's a lot nicer eight milliamps is a lot nicer than 30 something all right we can see here we've got the fast Fourier transform up here and we can see that with fundamental here we're at 1.7 dBm and the first harmonic is down 40 dB the rest of them are more than 55, 50, 57 dB down. So if you look at that in terms of adding up all the harmonics here, and uh, I'll do the math here and come right back with an estimate of the distortion. And so we're looking at uh, a distortion with one kilohertz sine wave going into it of less than 0.02%. And that's not bad. Now what I want to do next is I want to hook up, uh, I want to hook up one of these amplifiers. Is this one? as a preamplifier stage to it and uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Okay, let me set that up and we'll come right back. All right, so now with the uh, preamplifier plugged into it, which is our class A amplifier and going into our class AB amplifier. Now I, I didn't short out this capacitor here. You would have to do that to get you know the best overall frequency response. But uh, I just want to see what the gain looks like and, and what kind of um, distortion we're getting with the two of them in line with each other like this. So we've got, uh, yeah, 5 volts peak to peak coming out. And going in, we got 41 millivolts peak to peak. So let me do the math on that. So that gives us an overall gain of 122, which is not bad at all. And let's now, let's uh, now we'll bring up that Fourier transform. Wow. It looks like our distortion's actually gone down. We're now down around minus 50 dB for the first harmonic. That is absolutely fantastic. And the other ones, they're just, they're just not existent. They're down in the minus, minus 60 dB range. We can pretty well ignore those. So I'll, I'll do a guesstimate here. Okay, according to my calculations, we're looking at a total harmonic distortion of 0 0.002 or less. That's that's high fi quality right there. Uh, all in this very simple uh, little setup here. You know, let's see if we're still uh, producing enough output here to drive a speaker. Now, if you could drive this directly, like th this is a, an 8 ohm speaker, so that's why I've got these 222 ohm resistors in series here. It gives a total of about 20 ohms. 
this little amplifier here with the 2N2222 and the 2N3907 would easily drive a 60 ohm speaker. And you get about a total of about a quarter of a watt out of it. I'm gonna put this back on here. And we'll just do a quick check of the frequency response. So let's adjust this uh, here for, for one volt peak to peak of the output. Sort of picking up some noise from the environment here. There's nothing, sh nothing shielded that should probably be shielded for audio work. All right, that's close enough. So now uh, let's, let's decrease the frequency until we go down to a 0.7 volts. Now remember, we do have that capacitor in line there. Let's uh, quickly take it down to 100 hertz, 90 hertz, 60 hertz. Yeah, we've got some serious environmental noise going on here. It's probably these LED lights. We're down at 20 hertz. We're down for at 11 hertz. And let's go up the other end. So we'll put, put in a frequency first of uh, 20 kilohertz here. And we're still at one volt. So let's see if it would go to 500 kilohertz. Yeah, we're flat up to 500 kilohertz. Let's go up to one megahertz. Now we're coming down a little bit there. So at two megahertz, we're way down. Yeah, so what's the 3 dB point? We're right about there, about 1.4 megahertz. So we've got a nice little amplifier here that lets in points. 0.002% total harmonic distortion and has a frequency response from 14 hertz up to 1.4 gigahertz megahertz gigahertz <laughs> that'd be great no but that is that is pretty good as it is very nice very very nice let's bring it right back down to one kilohertz anyway Thanks a lot for joining me for this series, folks, and thanks again to PCP Way for making this possible. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Just for fun here, we're going to do some frequency modulation on this and uh, have a listen. Aliens. Over and out.